recently. And by recently, I mean like eight months ago. I had never had this experience before this. I moved to an island in the South Pacific and have gone the hiking bug. So I try and get out to new locations as much as I possibly can with what work eating into my precious time. This happened about two weeks ago. Since I live in the South Pacific region, it gets mighty hot, driving all by the most insane hikers indoors, unless it's at night. Of course, I'm not a masochist, so I try to do all my hiking in the early hours of the morning or in the evening when it starts getting cool. I've never been afraid of going hiking by myself. I did it when I lived in Oregon and never ran into any problems with it. But my island isn't my friendly home state. I always carry pepper spray, and when I used to go hiking in Montana and Wyoming, would sometimes carry a handgun to ward off anything that I couldn't take on, whether it was a bear or a person. But I'd always gotten off considerably lucky. I got to the trailhead at about 6.30 in the evening. The trail was called Thousand Steps, but in all honesty, it was mostly just a walk straight down to the cliff and then a grueling journey back up. I didn't want to go, but my dog, Mad Moxie, needed to be walked, and I had done the hike so many times, I could probably do it in my sleep. The first thing I noticed when I pulled up was an old, rickety, rusted out blue pickup truck with a big plastic tarp over the bed to keep out the rain. These are pretty common on the island, affectionately earning them the name Guam Bombs. I didn't think much of it as I hooked up Moxie and started heading down the trail, trying my best to ignore the mosquitoes that were making a meal out of my exposed neck. Heading down the trail was relatively easy. Avoiding the banana spider webs, I felt the stress of my day slowly unwind as the underbrush grew darker and night approached. I made it all the way down to the water's edge when I noticed a man standing about 100 yards away. It was dark enough that I could only see his silhouette, so I have no idea if he was looking at me or at the water, and instead pull Moxie's ball from my backpack and throw it for her a few times to get all her wiggles out. After some time, the man started walking over to me and stopped maybe about 10 feet away. Now, I'm not a tiny waif of a woman, I'm 23 years old, and I stand at about 5 foot 6 and this guy was just a couple of inches taller than me but most of the locals were on the smaller side but something about him just felt weird. Evening? I greeted as he nodded and looked down at Moxie who had just returned from running after her ball. I stooped down to pet her now sweaty head as the man kept his eyes trained on my dog. Can I help you sir? Pretty dog, he responded mildly. You alone? I have my dog, I said lamely, trying to sound braver than I was feeling. I'm never alone. I tried to emphasize on the fact that I had my dog with me, but the man seemed unfazed by my statement. Oh, have a good night. With that, he turned around and started walking back towards the trailhead. I watched his shadow disappear into the trees and waited for about half an hour before I too started walking back towards the path, my mind on high alert as Moxie pulled me through the trees and up the cliffside. The crickets pierced the night as I climbed the steps, illuminated by my flashlight. My hands were full with Moxie's leash and my light, but you could bet your buns that I would have pepper spray out if I had an extra hand. Finally, my light pierced the trees at the top and I practically booked it up the hill. When I got to the top, I nearly shut myself. The rusted blue pickup truck was sitting in the parking lot still, but their passenger side door was practically touching my car's driver's side. Inside, I could faintly see two men sitting in the cab and I could feel them watching me. Slowly, I approached my car, walking as far over to the passenger side as I could and kept Moxie with me close as I opened the door and crawled over to the driver's side. At that moment, the door of the pickup truck flew open and my dog started going apeshit, barking at the two people who were now outside of their car and trying to break into mine. My heart was in my chest, I rammed the keys into the ignition 
and tore out of the parking lot so quickly I nearly took my mirror off. I called my mum as soon as I got home and she begged me to call the police. Unfortunately, the police here on island aren't as vigilant as they are on the mainland and that area is known for car thefts, muggings etc as I learned from my co-workers later that week. Earlier this month, another girl actually disappeared from that area without a trace and it makes me wonder if the men in the blue pickup truck didn't have anything to do with it. If I hadn't had Moxie with me, would I have been mugged or worse? If I learned anything from this experience, it's that for my lady hikers, please always take pepper spray with you, go hiking in groups and always let someone know where you are going and it might just save your life someday. Hey guys, I've been reading this subreddit for a pretty long time and up until now have luckily avoided frightening situations that may be worthy of a post. This happened about 3 weeks ago, though I'm generally a slightly paranoid person as it stands, I'm glad to have read so many of these stories and it probably helped me make a safe decision on that night a few weeks ago. I'm a small woman in her early 20s who lives alone in a smallish condo slash apartment with her cat on the second floor of the building where I moved in a few months ago. There are two doors one must enter to get inside my apartment. The first is outside leading into the building and the second is obviously my apartment door itself. Tenants have keys for the outside door which has only one lock whereas the actual apartment doors have both locks and deadbolts, otherwise a visitor must be buzzed in to be allowed inside. For some clarity, there are 8 apartments per building in my complex with an outside door on either side of the building. Mine is closer to the back, mine is closer to the back and is situated directly above a currently empty apartment. My downstairs neighbour to the left is my age, the only neighbour I'm close with and is often away staying with her boyfriend. This means that while I live technically near others, my home is slightly isolated. There is an outdoor light situated next to the door, but I had noticed when returning home that the bulb had either broken or burnt out and hadn't thought to contact maintenance to fix it as it was late and I was tired. There hadn't appeared to be many others home in my building as the parking lot on my side wasn't particularly full. I was taking care of a few chores around the house at around 10pm Friday night running the dishwasher and folding laundry. I'd had a long week at school and had arrived home probably an hour to an hour and a half before. My cat was keeping me company as I potted around. It's hard to hear much outside while the dishwasher is going and I was generally distracted but barely noticed the soft rustling sort of sound outside. It didn't seem too strange aside from being repetitive. I really wasn't unnerved by this point but being constantly anxious anyway and was too frightened of the dark to look outside the window to that side of the building. This might very well have been totally unrelated but I think it bears mentioning. Fast forward a little while and I was standing at my kitchen counter working on a report on my laptop. Over the sound of the dishwasher, I heard a soft knock on my door upon which my cat bolted for the bedroom. Unsure at first if I really heard anything, I went still and waited a moment. There it was again, quiet but a little longer and faster. This made me pretty uneasy as it's late but my first thought is that it might be one of my neighbours. I approach the door quietly and look out the peephole. As I mentioned, the only neighbour I know well is the young woman who lives downstairs, but I'm familiar with what all the others look like. The man standing outside was completely unfamiliar to me, tall, wearing either a dark blue or black jacket, Caucasian with dark hair. He didn't look too unusual, just unfamiliar. What was unusual though was how close he was standing to the door, even distorted through the peephole. He was so close I would guess him to be standing square on the mat in the hallway, leading his face in slightly and staring at the peephole. There was an odd sort of energy in his stance, if that makes any sense. I immediately felt extremely unnerved and glad that I make very little noise when I walk. 
I backed up about three feet from the door and waited. I'm not totally sure how much time passed, but he probably stood there a couple of minutes longer before I heard him go downstairs and through the outside door. Now, I've had a neighbor from downstairs knock on my door in the evening before to ask me if I was experiencing a power outage, which he was. He'd brought his wife with him, probably to reassure me, and stood a reasonable distance back from the door after knocking firmly. This was exactly what this strange guy didn't do, which is why it set me on edge. However, always trying to convince myself that I was making a big deal out of nothing, I told myself that this had probably been a similar sort of situation, but was far too immediately uncomfortable to consider answering the door. I just decided to listen to my gut. I texted both my mum and my male friend about the situation, and my friend offered to come and keep me company. But by that time, I had talked myself out of some of my nervousness and assured him that I was fine. I went to sleep about an hour later and woke up having mostly forgotten about it. Shit got weird the next day. Only in the context of what I saw the next morning did the knock even seem all that frightening. I had agreed to accompany my mum and her boyfriend yard sale hopping that morning in some nearby neighbourhoods. It was a Saturday and they were picking me up early at around 7.30. My mum gave me a call from her car when they arrived on my side of the building to let me know to come down. I grabbed my bag, went out my door and downstairs. As soon as I opened the outside door, something was clearly wrong. The handle turned very loosely, the door opened very easily and upon shutting again behind me, the handle itself completely fell out of the hole. Looking back, I wish I'd taken a picture of it because it's a little hard to describe it but it had been messed with. The outside portion of the door handle was held in place with screws and that part was completely missing. The lock component of the handle was also missing. Essentially, what was left was a stripped handle with a hole in the middle where the keyhole should be. Both those parts when I searched the surrounding grass and sidewalk were nowhere to be found. Essentially, it had been thoroughly fucked with. My mum, having heard the knocking incident from me the night before, was not cool with this at all and insisted that I report the incident. I contacted maintenance and the police, but as there are no cameras situated near my apartment and definitely not near my door, I am not particularly hopeful. I have gotten no additional information as of now. In talking with my neighbours who were obviously made aware of the vandalism, nobody who was at home and awake around that time heard anyone knock on their door or saw, heard or came in contact with the man I described. Maybe this is overthinking it, but this makes me more nervous and it makes the approach seem more targeted and less random, as if you knew it was me in there. For what it's worth, the outside door handle was replaced very quickly that afternoon, nothing like it has happened since. Hey guys. I feel like sharing something that happened to me last night. So for some background, I'm an average sized, about 5'5 five five skinnyish 17 year old girl and I live in a small city in northern Canada. I was hanging out with my friends, just a typical Saturday night and around 12.30am I went back to my friend's house just to smoke some weed. So after a bit, I decided that I should walk home from his house, it's only a few minutes walking distance away and so around 1.30am I start trekking in the cold and dark night to go home, but I wasn't too worried because the city I live in is pretty safe. When I'm about halfway home, a taxi van slows down and drives by me, going the same way that I was. It makes a U-turn in front of me, drives by me again, honks, drives past me and makes another U-turn behind me and this time they come to a complete stop. I didn't get to see the driver but the passenger was a 25 to 30 year old man and proceeds to shout. Hey sexy, you look hot, wanna come to a party? Aside from the fact that this was strange, I found it strange because I was literally wearing my dad's sweater, my dad's jacket, plain black leggings and big winter boots. I instantly freeze and I think for a second maybe he thinks that I'm a prostitute, but prostitution isn't common at all where I live 
for it's not a big city at all and it's very cold at night time during this time of year. After about 20 seconds of us just looking at each other and me frozen in fear, I can't think of what to do but just keep driving in the hopes that they'll drive away. Of course, it didn't work out like that. They speed up and the man gets outside of the van and starts running towards me. I instantly take off but running in deep snow in big boots is quite hard so what do I do? I take off my boots, carry them and continue sprinting for my life. It makes a substantial difference because although it was very cold with snow under my feet, it made me much faster. I turn and instead of going home, I'm just twisting and turning through the streets while this guy is kind of staggering. While this guy is kind of staggering behind me and the taxi is speeding much faster. I can't think of what to do except run through the graveyard nearby, run to the forest behind it and there I ran along the paved trail in the forest until I got home which took much longer but I lost them. I rush inside, lock the doors and windows and I sit in my living room all night with a knife in hand. Why I didn't call the police, I don't know. I was still stoned and so not really thinking clearly. Also, my mum wasn't in town so I was home alone. I eventually fall asleep for a while and when I woke up in the morning, I called the police and told them everything that happened. They didn't find anything but said they'd get back to me if they did. I began babysitting at 13 to earn extra money to spend on horribly embarrassing things like Fallout Boy CDs. I would almost always work for my dad's clients and get referred by word of mouth. I was babysitting for this one family who had a little girl, 9, and a little boy, 7. The parents seemed okay and if a tad crotchety giving me a full schedule to follow and jokingly threatening to beat any boy who might mysteriously show up after they left. It felt cruel for them to accuse me of even knowing a boy given I basically looked like an overgrown baby with frizzy hair at that age. Almost immediately after the parents leave, the little girl sings in a creepy high pitched voice. We're all alone now. Right here, cue the shining soundtrack. I know, the little boy chimed in. Let's play rape. Looking back now, I know the kid probably just heard the term rape on TV, knew the word was shocking and said it just for a reaction. I totally bought into it at the time, sputtering wide eyed and changing the subject quickly. These kids were hell for the next hour. I wouldn't let them watch South Park on the TV because their parents did not seem like the type to allow their precious 7 and 9 year old to watch a show like that. As soon as I said no, the little girl said casually, Oh, that's fine. We'll just go play PlayStation in the family room. Feel free to watch it out here. <laughs> nope. I knew exactly where that was headed. I said they could watch any other TV show in the living room while I made them dinner. The parents had left instructions to make them sandwiches. I could handle that. Before I had even got out the bread, I hear a massive crash. It seems like the little girl has broken a glass. Tutting and pissed, but ultimately with no way to punish her, I cleaned it up while the two incredibly weird kids watched with wide eyes. Dumping the broken glass in the trash, I went back to making the sandwiches. I'm a vegetarian. So while the kids had chicken, I'd made a simple salad one for myself. Just as I was finishing, the little boy screamed out in what sounded like a pantomime of pain. Nonetheless, I ran over to the couch in the living room to check on him. My ankle, he howled, dramatically flopping back into the couch. While I tried to figure out how he had hurt himself, the little girl slipped out of the room. Peripherally, I was aware of this but didn't really pay it any mind. Focused on this little boy pretending to be in pain, he kept saying, I, I want to stand, but it hurt too much. I don't know. Over and over until his eyes suddenly flicked to just behind me, where I could see the little girl standing with a perturbing smile on her face. He was miraculously healed. Yeah, praise the Lord. At this point, I was just thinking these kids were really weird. 
craved attention a little too much and probably needed more parental involvement. Whatever, I was 13 and that $60 was only 4 hours away. I set out the sandwiches for the two to eat at the dining table, went to get us soda and returned. After pouring soda for the both of them, I realized they hadn't even taken a bite of their sandwiches yet. I asked them what they were waiting for. They smiled. For you to take a bite of yours. I'm so glad I had a gut feeling to open the top part of bread of my sandwich. Because when I did, I saw glass. Broken glass. Broken glass that I'd just put in the trash. I stared in horror at the two little kids staring at me with menacing twin grins. I lost it, shouting. Are you serious? At the very least, you could have really injured my mouth. What's wrong with you two? Instead of crying or apologizing or pretending to be ashamed or confused, these two little fuckers began laughing. Not like kids. It was too low. It wasn't that silly, free laugh kids laugh. It was low and threatening. I will never forget that noise. My immediate reaction was, these kids are too young to be laughing like that. I called my older sister, who was 17 at the time, cried about what had happened, and she came and took over for me. We left the house with chills after their parents arrived. I never babysat for those two again. What I can't get past uh, is the level of premeditation that went into sprinkling that broken glass in my sandwich and the totally remorseless way they responded to me getting upset. They were unlike any two kids I've ever met before. In the mid 80s, my mum was a cleaner in Australia. She would clean houses in suburban areas and would sometimes do houses in rural and wine regions. We lived near both. She would leave business cards at the local shops and got most of her business this way and some through referrals and word of mouth. One day, she got a call from a lady who sounded like she was around 60, asking mum to clean her old farmhouse. She made a lot of odd demands and mum would usually meet clients before taking on new business. In this case, the lady did not want to meet mum and she would leave the keys under the front doormat. My mum agreed, mainly because the lady was quite obviously wealthy and was offering to pay mum substantially more than she would reasonably expect. My mum went to the house on a Monday morning and said that she already felt unnerved by the long driveway. The house was essentially in the middle of a very large and very empty property. She found the keys and started cleaning. About an hour into the clean, she hears the back door shut. Mum was told that no one would be at home, so she immediately felt unsafe. She stood frozen in the kitchen for what she said felt like three to four minutes although she said it could have been much longer. There was no other car on the property. She wanted to leave immediately but had two rooms left to do. Both were bedrooms. She said as time passed and she heard nothing else, she decided that perhaps it was nothing or perhaps something had fallen and it wasn't the door after all. She walked up the hallway and stepped into the bedroom. All over the bed were black and white photos. As mum got closer, she realized the photos were all of her. Some were taken at our family home, and many others were taken at houses that mum would clean. Some through windows or over fences. She used the house phone to call the police and immediately drove to the end of the driveway. The lady ended up being investigated, but continued to claim that it was a break-in. After some time, the police stopped with their searching and we ended up moving to a new town four months later. Every time mum tells me this story, I get serious chills. Absolutely a true story. To this day, my mum thinks that the lady had something to do with it. But why? And for what purpose?